Here we go. Okay, here we go. Mars in the houses. We're talking about your energy field, your life force. The sun is the father, right? The sun is the energy of awareness. It's the energy that deal with willpower and your scrimp, right? So what is Mars? Mars is the action part of what the fiery sun is. So Mars is dominant. I thought so powerful. So impactful and so go getter and so want to experience and so, so who can cont contain this energy? So, when we put it in the houses, in the 12 houses, in the 12 sides, let's see what impact it has because Mars deals with the head, but also Mars it, it deals with the solar plex, but it deals with energy itself. So, this is your life force. So, this is powerful as your sun sign. And anybody, look at people, uh, Mars placement, if you want to really know how they take action. If you want to know about their sexy, you want to know about their attraction. If you want to know about how they go to war, look at their, their, their Mars placement. If you want to know about their energy, like I say, the powerful aggressiveness of them, that side of them. Now, when you got Mars and Taurus, Better yet, let's start. Let's start at the first house. When you got Mars and Aries, this is a powerful, a powerful placement because Aries, Aries is a placement that deals with war. Cause Mars deals with war, so it's right at home in the sign of Aries. And if it's in the first house, it's part of the head, part of the personality. So Mars is quick. Mars want to do things quick. Mars want to get things. So when it's in the sign of Aries or the first house, these people get bored quickly. So they got to do, they got to constantly be here. They got to do more than one party. They 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 go one, they, they go to one party and they go to another. They go to, they like to do many things at one time. But also they, they think quick. They they go by the impulse. They ain't got time to think of everything. They want to keep moving. You know what I mean? They ain't gonna be like an air sign who think. So you got Mars in the first house of Aries. These people are go-getter. I don't care what your ascendant sign is. If you got Mars in the first house, you're a go-getter. Because Mars is in this house. You definitely uh, got aggressive energy where you could be snappish, uh, quick anger. And the thing is, you're going to try to master something that you're interested in. If you're interested in something because you lose interest quick, that'll mean you're going to stop uh, doing which you're not interested in. So whatever you're interested in, you're going to fulfill that because uh, Mars is energy that keep going, that keep going, keep going, but it can lose interest in, in something over a period of time. But Mars is also a fighter, so you will fight to keep yourself up and strong. So you, you got a clear cognitive sense where you just know, you know how to move, you know how to go, you know what it takes for people to survive without even thinking. So with these quick instincts, if you're bored, these people can start drama a lot. So you got Mars in the first house or Mars and Aries. So they can start drama a lot. It could be your drama kings or your drama queens like that there. People who like to fight a lot. And not only fight, they don't have to fight physically, but also fight with words or fight in any way. It could be emotions. But anyway, they got they got that fiery emotion, very crumped. So when you got Mars in the first house, it's sexity is high, so they want to dominate. Uh, they, they want to dominate when we're doing sex. So love or there's their desires is sex. So far as all that lovey dovey, they ain't with all that. They just want to have sex, want to experience it, unless they enter you like that. So you got Mars in this house. These people can go for days when we talk about sex. This is one of their pleasures. They got to have sex. So their libido is so high. So high, so high, very sex or, or, or So they like to try new people and new things until they find that that one. So they be dedicated to that, that one person when they find it, find that person. You know what I mean? But their mind will mostly be on their goals. They, they're goal driven, goal orient people. When you got Mars in, in the first house of Mars and Aries. So these people are very powerful and um, they're stand up type of people. They're straightforward. The thing is, you would like their aura because they got that, that fiery aura where they would stand up for, the, for themselves. So their life force is 
Very powerful when it's in Aries. They got to do something. Always doing this, doing that, going to the next thing until they're tired. You know what I mean? Then they don't even get that much rest. When they go to sleep, they might get two, three, four, five hours of sleep and wake back up and then they're doing something. They got to do something because that's how the energy works. It's so aggressive, so down. They got to put their energy into something because they don't. They could be snapping, start drowning for nothing, just talking just so they can start drowning, but it's be fun to them. And they can start without knowing. Without knowing, they start drowning. So, because they got to put their energy into something. So, when they put their energy into something positive, they can also be the ones who help people and help uplift people, as long as they don't be selfish. Because if you can be very selfish, don't want to hear what other people got to say, don't want to hear, don't want to hear other people's thoughts or their mind state, because this is that Mars energy. This is that Mars energy where they don't want to hear what people have to say, where they can care less what people have to say. So the way you take action is very powerful, uh, 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 very creative. The way you take action, you got a creative mind, always think, thinking of events to plan, uh, uh, things to do, knowing how to, because uh, you can be a good planner, a, event planner, because you're good at starting off things. Start out with new ideas and events and stuff. You great idealistic type person. So people could come to you for great ideas. So event planners like that, you could be all of that there. Because you, you always, the reason why a, a event planner would be good for you because every event is different. So this would be a different a different thing. You like things that's different. You don't like the same old and you don't like to be bored. So you could be an event planner. You could be the one who do hair, very creative, and do many other things. Because many styles, because this is a very creative place. But so we got Mars in this house. They always want to create something, always want to do something, always into something. And they always want to, uh, they always think the best of people too. They're very happy people too. This energy is very happy unless you got opposition and squares to your Mars in this house, the first house, or your or Mars and Aries. Uh, these people are always like cheerful and they up. Even though they can snap quick, even though they can be very aggressive and anger, get angry quick, but they come out of that quick. You know, they're super aggressive. They're fun to be around. You could never have a dub moment, and they can be very adventurous. So whatever they focus on, they go for it. They fight for it. That's the thing about it. Ain't nobody going to stop them when they got it in their in their mind. But the thing is, they don't think. So, so sometimes they do need people like air signs who are thinkers, like your Libras, like your Aquarius. They need the opposite, which is Libra, Libras when it comes to thinking because they can get themselves in a bad predicament. But they, they also get themselves out because they will fight their way out. The thing about this place, but they're not scary worth a darn. So sometimes they could be in fear, but they, but they put on like they're you know, tough because this is a tough placement. They don't really like uh, 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 what you would say softness because they they're strong. They really don't like uh, that depression type energy. That that um, you know how like water signs, or earth signs, they stay more on on a lower level of uh, pe being pessimistic. This type of energy like love people who have a goal. They like people who are strong. They like scrum, but they also like. People are happy, so they always want to inspire that in people. So they, they are the type will tell you, you can go for it. Go, go for it. Even if it's seeing impossible to a water sign or earth sign type people, Mars type of energy going to tell that you, you going to tell people to to go for it automatically. That's the type of energy Mars is more inspirational. So um, we got Mars in the first house of Mars and Aries. These are the people you want on your team because they're going to protect you. They're going to fight with you and everything. So that's that's why it's important uh, when you got Mars on dealing with these people. So this is a very important place right here. So Mars energy. Think about what Mars is. It's very spiritual too. They're very divine, but in their own way. You know what I mean? Because they get bored with, with just something like religion or bored with something... Like that there, unless they really dedicated to it. So these people here are very great people to have on your team. They are warriors at heart. So these are your heroes, your female heroes or your male heroes right here. If you got Mars in the first house or Mars in Aries. So now when you got Mars in Taurus or Mars in the second house, I got Mars in the second house, but but I got Mars in the second house and I got Mars in Cancer. But 
if you got Mars in the second house or Taurus, these people, they could be slow to speak, slow to move. So they put their energy into things that deals with like something that they believe in, something they, what they value. It's, so they, they when they get into something, they want to do one thing at a time because they want to master it or it can be something that they're interested in because they ain't going to mess with nothing that, that they're not interested in. And so when they do get into something, they can go for it because Mars going to help speed up their energy. Mars going to help them go for it. And then we're more determined because Taurus, the house of Taurus is going to be more determined and they're more creative, more about beauty, more about charm. But not only about that, they actually want to experience that because this is more earthly. So they want to really have it, you know, manifest itself. And so these people, could, they're going to be very creative and they want to see their manifestations. So they're going to be into something like drawing where they can see the pictures, you know, and they'll be in something like, um, like music where they could touch the keys and where they can make their own music and, and also singing and stuff like that there. And you got Mars in the second house or Mars and Taurus. So these people can be super creative, super creative. And the thing is they gonna have swagger. So these are your hard workers, but see, they're going to be careful uh, what they get these seven to because they're going to get the seven to anything and they slow the anger. But when they, when they do a slow, when they do anger, they really explode. They go hard because it's the bull. So, so they might be slow to start on something, but when they do get started in something, it could be years, and they had the patience to do that. They had the patience to to they had the patience to to wait till they find their career. But when they find it, it's on. They don't stop because this is the earth. Earth don't stop. When earth gets started, they persistence. So when you add Mars to it, it's gonna put spice on that. So we got. Mars and Taurus or the second house, this is a powerful placement right here because they're gonna go, they're gonna be your great achievers and they're gonna be your hard workers and dedicated to whatever they're into. So these are your great hustlers right here. So we talk about hustlers in this house. These are the type who can spend big. They spend big money because Mars gonna make them spend. Mars gonna get in the mix. They're gonna spend this and buy this and do this. Spend quick and don't even save no money because of Mars. So once they discipline themselves and learn about their value system, they can really to counsel people, heal people. So physical therapy will be good for these people, like holding gemstones. They can be into the massage thing, or they can be into business too. Business, dealing with money, counting, you know what I mean, stuff like that. And also, you know, teaching people about how to build a credit and stuff like that into to the finances, but also into landscaping and stuff like that. Cause Mars in the second house of Taurus deals with that. Taurus people like gods, they like nature. And so these people will be into nature, energy that deal with nature. So they'll be aggressive when it comes to having things. They can be very possessive right here. So these people can fight over their possessions. If you do something to their possessions, or they can fight over anybody, anything they think of, of that's their possessions. Like, it could be people. It could be places. If, if they think this person is their possession, what, what I mean is, if they think that they have any attachment to a person, place, a thing, they could fight over that. Because Mars is here. So, I mean, they'll stand up for family. They'll stand up for, uh, uh, they'll stand up for things, you know, that they're possessed of or, the, or uh, things of that nature. But also, these people, these people are <clears throat> one of the best. When you're talking about speaking, when you're talking about speaking like in a slower lingo, they, they can speak very slowly with it where you can understand them. A lot of them can speak like, like that. But also, Mars can turn them up to speak fast too. So they have a very smooth, good voice because Taurus deal with the voice. They deal with the throat. The throat. So... They can they can be the one who understand words very good and can imagine it, but they want to manifest what they imagine. So you see, they want to manifest it, so they they can empathize with people very good because the Venus effect. So we got Mars in the house of Venus. These people actually want to want to have sex and really feel it. So like air signs, they can have sex in their mind, but see Taurus house of Taurus, they really want to have it. And they can go for days because that it's that physical energy with the fire energy with. The Mars energy, so so that type of stuff. They really want to feel it, you know, and they're very sensual. Earth signs are very sensual, 
So you put Mars into that, to that, cause Mars already sexual anyway. Eric says sexual and sensual, highly. So when they really, they can be really on fire and can really go for, go for a long time in sex when they do have it. So uh, this is something natural to a Taurus when they do have sex. It'd be more like like physical, but it could be more like uh, ro romantic or more lovey dovey type. You know what I'm saying? Because Venus there. So, the, so these type of people want to explore all these senses, like good smells in the bedroom, you know, spice it up with champagne and stuff like that, you know, um, putting money on the bed, that's sexual to them because they like money. This is a money sign. So we got Mars and Taurus, they love money. They know how to get money. You got many ways. So money comes to them pretty easy right here. So now, also, like I say, they're empaths. They can feel physical energy in their body. They feel your pain, his pain inside their body, but they, they are good at concealing their emotions. They don't really like living their emotions, but they can feel it. You see what I'm saying? So they like to, they could be a private type of people, individuals. When you got Mars and a Taurus or Mars in the second house, they could be like very private. Like, so we're dealing with Mars and Taurus energy. This is what it deals with, you know? And so let's move on. You got Mars in Gemini and Mars in the third house or Gemini. This is very interesting because their mind is already over the place. You got Mars that's going to, uh, uh, to bring more fire to it. They definitely need to do something with this energy. They need to really carry it out and manifest something because there's too much energy that's, that's living in their body, all, all traveling through their, their the nervous system. So they, they have high anxiety, very nervous-like energy. Because they got they need to do something with this energy. So they they are thinkers. So they're gonna lash out with words. They're gonna lash out with their tongue. Like Earth sign will lash out with a fist because it's earth or something like that. If they do lash out, they can really get physical. But uh Gemini gonna lash out with their tongue. They go with word, they slice you down, cut you down. Uh, and they and this model spice up the mercury and make it more, super smart, super quick thinking. Cause you know, Mercury already think quick. And so they, they got to learn how to calm their energy down. They can eat fast, talk fast, think fast, drink fast, because you got Mars in the third house. So they got to be on knowledge. They got to put their mind into something, more than one thing. Not only knowledge, they also got to do things, because Mars want to do things. Mars like activities. And so they are great planners, but they can't stick to one thing, because it, it runs in and out. Like... Well, they might like one thing, then they ain't interested in it no more. They're super impulsive. And the way they think, they're always overthinking. It's hard for them to sleep. It's hard for them to rest. Toss the turn it all the time. Because you got Mars and Gemini. So their mind is, they're great mind readers, quick thoughts. Because they can, they can like pick up on people's thoughts. At the same time, they can lose it quick. They can pick up on your thoughts. And they might want to tell you, but then... then you might keep talking to them. And they might lose what they want to tell you. They might want to, they might lose... Uh, uh, like they can pick up on, they can read my mind. I might say, uh, I want to go to the gym. They, they, they might catch that in their mind. They might say, oh, you want to go to the gym? Or something like that. But then they might lose that thought if, if you keep talking and they never get to express it. So that's how the energy works. Because it's fast energy. It moves in, it moves out. And then it's telepathic. Very telepathic. Where they transfer thoughts to you. Because it's high energetic. So you can transfer thoughts to you. Like you could think about going to the beach and and you might they might think of you. They might think of you. They okay, they might think about going to the beach, and they might think of you, and they say you know you call them because they don't transfer that thought to you. Just that quick. And they say, you know, they call it you calling them like that there. So that's how it works. Transferring energy, uh telepathy powers. So also they can finish your sentence off, like what you about to say next. Cause it's that uh Mars. The Mars and Gemini, or Mars in the third house. So they're very active and they're very good with words. And this this is they can use words as their weapon once they get irritated or 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 when they don't have no more fun, when they feel like when they feel like it, like things bored, you know, they want to spice some stuff up. They like to talk dirty in the bed. So sex with these people will be very fun because they can adapt to all levels. And it starts in the mind. They think of it first before they carry it out. So you know, they already know how to have sex and what angle. And they like to mess with a variety of people when they have sex. 
So they like force is deals with communication, deal with words, understanding lingo, understanding symbols, understanding signs. So that that's what that's what it deals with here. So they can be your great teachers right here. Your great teachers, like miles and areas, people be great leaders. These people could be great teachers and, and great uh interpreters, lingo interpreters right here. So they, they could be your great teachers, interpreters, and they good at understanding the word. They're good at understanding sounds. So understanding sounds. So they, they could be very clear audience where they can hear words or they or for example, they could be the type that go out somewhere or or on a walk and all of a sudden they just hear music playing in their in their soul, playing in their head. They can hear music playing. And so they be singing a the song. They just hear, hear the music. That's clear audience. Clear audience, like all of a sudden, some, some, it's feel like you can feel some music. Like, for example, I can hear uh, uh, Keith Sweat. Girl, you got me twisted. Early in the morning, it's playing in your soul. That's type of stuff that Mars and Gemini type people be on, or the third house. So, very communicative where, where they can just. Uh, all of a sudden, something just play in their mind and deal with words and deal with sounds. Hear all these sounds, and they might hear like something ringing in their ear. You know, hearing like voices, you know, from afar off. Uh, even hearing through walls, hearing their relatives talk from a long distance and stuff like that. So that's what it deals with right here. So these people can can understand word and lingo quick, and through the music, they can understand uh, uh, what music will work 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 for anybody, like. They can understand your gifts and your talents, and they can understand what'll work for you. So they're good at connecting people too. They're good at connecting people, bringing people together. Cause they're good with the mouthpiece. They can talk very good and very smooth. They can talk many ways. They're very adaptable. So they can be great actors too. So with the Mars and Mercury placement or the third house. So the siblings, they can go to war with their siblings, battle back and forth with their siblings, too aggressive. Could deal with the siblings and stuff like that there. But they also will respect their brothers and sisters. Anybody could be their brothers and sisters. They say, what's up, brother? What's up, sister? People with Mars and Gemini place, but a lot of them say, what's up, brother? What's up, sister? What's up, sister? Just like uh, Mars and Cancer would say, what's up, family? They would say, what's up? Uh, or what's up, mother? Or what's up, you know, father? These people would say, what's up, brother? Brother? Or what's up, sister? A lot, because they deal with the similars. So how they grew up, is in a fast pace environment, uh, very action packed, and so that's how their mind is. They're equipped, so they got experience with dealing with life. So they grew up pretty fast. People got Mars and Gemini type placement. Now, moving on, we got Mars and Cancer. I got Mars and Cancer. And we got Mars in the fourth house. I'm talking to you. So, Mars and Cancer type people. We all know that Cancer is emotion. And, you know, the moon don't really like to mess with Mars because Mars is too aggressive for the moon. The moon like to be on the chill, chill. The moon like relaxation. The moon like, like, like you know, spiritual stuff and like to stay in the inner world. Mars want to go out, out of the inner world. Mars want to do things. And so when you got it in cancer here, this caused a, a big uh, fight, tug of war, until they come together in one and agree. So when your energy aligned and agree, uh, Cancer will go in, and Mars will go, go in the house of cancer, and, and, and they'll go in the inner self, and what's in the inner self, cancer will bring it outwardly and put it into action, and put it into action. But also, this can cause emotional warfare where we take a time bomb right here. Because I was a ticking time bomb, I never understood why, because you got Mars and cancer. And they used to call me a ticking time bomb. It's super emotional, moves change. One minute. You feel like this. In one minute, you feel like that. In one minute, you feel like this. They be like, dog, just 20 minutes ago, you felt happy. And now you feel like going to sleep. And now you feel, uh, an hour later, you feel like doing this. Because you got Mars in the moon. This Mars in the motion, like the moon phases. So is cancer. So people who has Mars in the moon or the fourth house or cancer, all their life, they want to master their emotions. And I finally mastered my emotions. That was the thing. You will have emotions, but you got to learn how to deal with your emotions and master it. And, and learn how to express your emotions and use it to heal. Because these people got very cool, calm, healing energy. 
Because the moon bring people who like the mother energy that you can relate to. So they got that, that they do good with women. And people got squares of opposition. They might be against women, fight against women, and hate women, and become homos. It, people got squares of opposition with Mars and the moon. So also, these people honor their mother. We got Mars. In the moon, some stay with their mother. Some love to always live with their mother. Or some will want a, a, a woman or a girl who has uh, uh, their mother uh, uh, traits. Some some will like nurturing and caring uh, women. Like people got Mars and Cancer of the four powers with like women who are nurturing, who are caring. This will turn them on. And so when they have sex, their sex life is more like they got the bond and connect with you. And once they bond and connect with the person, their sex life is also love to them. And, and they see it as spiritual. They see it as all in one, like, like it's all in. And so that's why they're very picky and choosy and careful what they mess with. When you got Mars and the moon, or Mars and Cancer, or Mars in the fourth house. So their home is a sacred, sacred, sacred spot where they feel comfortable at. And their home could be anywhere in the world. Anywhere they feel comfortable at, any building that they used to go to, or any place they used to go to, it could be a neighborhood. They will all represent where they grew up at or where they came up, uh, their roots. It's very important to these people. And but so they're very psychic when dealing with emotions. If so they class sentient when dealing with feelings, but also empaths, psychic empaths. And so they can read you like a book. They can feel something in their joint and can tell something about you. I'm very much class I read so many people through what I feel in every part of my body. I know what it means. So, so these people, like for example, if I feel something in my left arm, the left side I deal with the inner cell, I deal with the uh, 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 the home life, and deal with what's close to you. And so, if I feel something in my inner self, like on my arm, my arm deal with Mercury, deal with Gemini energy. So, this tells me that that there could be a problem with the semblance. Cause it's the inner self, cause it is close, and it's it's the left side. So it's what's close to you. It could be your brother or sister, or it ain't got to be a problem with the semblance, but also be a problem with, with with somebody thinking. When you read somebody, it could be a problem with, with, with people fight, people going against people with thoughts and stuff. Like if I'm reading this person, and I feel this in my left arm, I said, "Oh, okay. If I see you have a problem, cause I feel it in my arm. It feels very hard. It feels rough." Like like you're having a rough time. Uh you people fighting against your thoughts, like in your family. People close to you, maybe your brothers or sisters, because it's in the left side of the arm. I'm just giving y'all an example of how I can read people through my body, through what I feel in this cosmic body. And and, and I can feel people's emotions in my body. So when we're talking about uh people Mars and the four powers or cancer, this type of energy they up on. It's very psychic, very tuned with emotions, very tuned with feelings. It's all about how they feel. If they don't feel some type of way, I don't care about how, how they think, but if they don't feel some type of way, it's different. They could think all day. They could say, uh, uh, I'm going to the mall. They could think it all day. But if they don't feel like going, they're not going, no matter what they think of. So it's how they feel. Their feeling got to be in tune with their thoughts. Because if it's not, they're not, they're not doing it. Because they can go most about what they feel. Because this is how they take action. This is their life force. And so for these people here, of course, they will have the sex drive come on with the, with the moon phases. Like, it just come on. They be horny as hell. Horny as, horny as hell according to the moon phase. Because according to the moon phase, they, moon, they can feel the moon, but also their mood changes. And so... They're going to be emotional intelligence when dealing with emotions and also when dealing with energy itself. Because they deal with energy. This, this is the house of the ancestors. Or Mars and Cancer deal with the ancestors. So they're going to be into the ancestors, into the culture, and dedicated to it. So this is a loyal place. When we, whoever is friends with these people, Mars and Cancer, or Mars and Four Powers, you got loyal friends for life. As long as their mind is right, their emotions are right. Because they, they, can, they can be super intelligence too, high intelligence too. So if their emotions right, their mind right, you got a friend for life. So they attach to their past where they go back and their homies will always be their homies because they go back in their past. I remember that we did this and, and they'll smile. That's how I do to this day. You still, you still cool with people in the past because 
They don't forget the past. And, and they can use their past to advance and use as wisdom. And they teach from their past of what they went through. So by me knowing Mars, let me see who this is. You have that too, Mars in the fourth house of Mars of Cancer. Hey, honey, I see you. I find it, I'm finally looking. But um, but yeah, Mars in the fourth house, that's what they deal with. They deal with the past. And so these people deal with the ancestors. They deal with cultures. And, and so we're talking Mars of Cancer or the fourth house. They love their family. They'll die for their family. They'll fight for their family. This is what they'll fight for. This is, this is what their strength is. Other than that, they ain't going to just fight. They're very security oriented and they will fight for their family, fight for their home, even fight for their neighborhood. It was time where I had fight, like out of my hood, they come get me because they know I'll fight for everybody, you know, and I don't care if I have to run through 10, 10 people. I'm fighting 10 people and I'm a little guy, but I had heart for, for, for family and friends. That's type of energy. You talk about all the cancer, they're very dangerous. They can be very dangerous. They can deal with moves, emotions, but they, Protectors of their family. They protected all those they love to be friends or family. And they said they consider friends as family. So you can be the one they call friends family. Like, what's up, family? You hear people say that all the time. They got cancer traits, a moon traits. They ain't got to have they ain't got to be a cancer sun. They be cancer moon, cancer rising, or they can have a lot of cancer in their chart, a lot of moon in their chart. That's what they're gonna be like, what's up, family? All the time. So Anybody who got Mars or Cancer or, or, or Mars or Cancer, Mars is how people take action. This is the life force. This is the high aggressive sexy energy. Like the sun is more of awareness. It's the willpower. It's strength. It's the father of energy. But Mars is the action of the sun. It's, 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 it's the go-getter of the sun. So Mars is the fighter of the sun. Like the sun is shining. All oh, day, sun suave, smooth. The father know how to play itself, but Mars is the action of Mars. Actually, make it happen. You know, go get it done. Cause you gotta understand, Mars is in the cardinal sign. It's in Aries, but also it's in a powerful Pluto sign. So, so Mars is very powerful placement. So we got Mars and Cancer. These people, they they love a family environment. They love a tradition. They love culture. They love uh the ancestors so don't come against their family their ancestors or nothing like that there or it's over with because they will go all out and, and they could be lunatics because that's why the, the moon deal with loonies so the, so they could be all balanced and go to mental hospitals all the most of the people can go to mental hospitals just like mental people because they can be all balanced emotionally so long as they they all fight to have stability and balance like what uh, Capricorn represents, the opposites. The opposite represents stability. It's the earth sign. So that's what cancers seek. That's what the four or five people seek, stability. So they, they, they want somebody like practical and strong, you know what I'm saying, who can be loyal like them because it's a loyal sign. So now, so when you got Mars in the fifth house in Leo, Oh, Mars and Leo. Mars in the fifth house. So we got people here are leaders, naturally. Mars will make them super leaders, heroes. So, and they all they gonna put their mind on uh, their actions into being creative. So their sexity gonna be so fun. Spice it up in the bed. They're gonna do all type of stuff. They're not an act, they're not a perform. So they wanna be the ones who be the show. They they gonna wanna they gonna wanna be the show. Not their partner. They won't be the show. They like when their partner compliment them in the bed. That they make them go extra with even giving it to them. So they like to experience all type of casual sex. So this sex, it's also love to them. So casual sex, like they can have one night stand with you and have sex with you and, and they still will show their love to you. Even if they never see you again. To them, you always like, they see you again, you always be good because you got to understand this is a fixed house too now, so they can be fixed on you where they will have another time with you. One night stand like house. So, but also this house, when they find that partner, they'll be fixed in a relationship for life with that partner, be loyal, dedicated to that partner. So it could go either or according on the person. So when you got Mars in the fifth house, a Leo, they like to have fun. They like their sex to be fun. 
And this is one of the funnest places when dinner was said, because it's the house of sex, the house of love, the house of romance, the house of kids, the house of hobbies, the house of creativity, the house of, of, of leadership, the house of performing, the house of the arts. This is the house of life itself, because it's deal with the sun. So these people are inspiration to all those they're around. But also, they can be very hated by many because they shine a lot. They always shine, so they were like things like gold nature. They're like they were like things that shine. They were like things that look good. So they like beauty. So they're into the arts. You know what I'm saying? So these are beautiful people, just like your Mars and Taurus people. Or the second house is beautiful. So is Mars and um, cause 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 Mars the second house deal with Venus. So Venus and the Sun type energy and Neptune they deal with beauty off the rift. They're gonna be some beautiful people. So we got Mars and um the Sun. You can see they got a glow. Everybody I know who has a lot of Leo energy or the moon in Leo or the sun in Leo or Leo rising or a lot of Leo, these women or dudes, they're going to glow. They're going to glow. The woman's going to look very good. The men going to look very good. And they gonna they want to be the best. They want to look the best. They will come up with new ideas. They're very innovative. They're trendsetting. So the way you take action it's going to be through creativity, just coming out new style, being inventive, being very creative, you know what I'm saying? Being very stylish, and you're going to be different than, than the norm. People will like your swagger, the way you talk. You're going to have an interesting way you talk, interesting things you do, come up with great ideas. As long as you don't give out all your ideas, because people, people will copy your ideas and take it from you and utilize it like it's their own. So... When you got Mars in the fifth house of Mars and Leo, you are the shine. And the thing is that, that, that when you put your mind into something, when your mind is fixed, you don't stop. Because this is a fixed house, a fixed sign. It's Leo, Mars and Leo. You don't stop. You go get it. You know, so this is another go get a sign when you put your mind to it. But this is a sign that can be very romantic, very lovey dovey. And also, uh, not it could be selfish. But also, when you learn not to, when you learn that learn how to discipline your selfishness, you can be very uh, in unity with people. You can represent unity, oneness. So you can also like help other people become leaders and be strong. So you're here to do that. When you got Mars and Leo, you can be the inspiration to everyone you're around. That's how you take action. You like to inspire people. You like to compliment people. That's how you like to take action. Compliment people. Very nice. Very cool. But also you can be you could you could, could be a fighter now because that fire energy. So you bold, you know. So at the same time, you will have fun because it's very positive energy. So you can be positive most lightly. And you have people gonna hate the shine, but you can you don't care because the mods there, mods gonna keep you standing strong. So for you, listen to your heart is the key. Listen to your heart is the key. So when you listen to your heart, your heart intuition. Nothing can stop you because you're very creative. So you have a creative heart. Your intuition be very creative, creating your reality. Like, for example, when I say creative, I'm talking about all ways. I'm talking about creating where you stay, like designing it up, designing your car, designing your life, like what you do. You know what I'm saying? Designing your ways, your styles, you know, being creative in every aspect of life because this is the creative house. This this one of the most creative places, but also this is the one that gives things life. So you the one gonna give people life. When people feel down and out, you bring that inspiration, <laughs> spark them. The sun, what the sun do? We give everything energy, life, inspiration, motivation. So you can be a motivational speaker. You love the public. You have no you have no trouble being out in the public. And so shining is what you do. Being on stage is what you do. This is what you do. Being playful, being silly, be have a sense of humor, comedian. Something you do. Just like Miles and Cancer, cancer people or the fourth house could be a comedian. So is you, Miles and the fifth house could be comedians. You have a great sense of humor. The reason why Miles and Cancer could be comedians because they can understand emotions real well. So they can play many roles because they understand people. They understand the way souls operate. Souls deal with emotions. So they can play many characters. They're very meditative. Like Miles and Cancer is very meditative. So is you. But the thing about you, you will definitely carry it out more than anyone. So you're creating your life all around you, creating people around you, spreading that inspiration all around you, motivating many people. The sun gives inspiration to many people. So you can be inspiring to many people. So now, 
And we got Mars in Virgo or the sixth house. So we know that Virgo deal is Earth and the deal with Mercury, but it's mutable. So, so Mars will be mutable. Mars out of death. In this house, you deal with healing. This is health, healing. Not only physical health, mental health all around. So these people here, if they're not right, they can go crazy. They've been a mental institution. And or be close to committing suicide. But also, when they get their mind right and they balance this energy out, they'll be the one who be the healers right here. Who come up with problem solve solution. They got to. Because Miles make them tick. Miles make them want to do this, want to serve. They need something to do. They ain't got nothing to do. They don't feel like life. So, so helping you. And they're going to be into like exercising, into training, fitness work, stuff like that. Job. They need a job. They need a career. And they, they the type that the career that they will have will be something that's they were analytical data. It could be teaching. It'd be many things, many things that deal with healing, problem solving. It could be detective work. Cause these are the people who, who find solutions. They see things that other people don't see. And so these are one of the great physical impact where they feel things through through their body. And they can tell if you're sick or what you're going through, and they can tell you what your problem is. Cause if say like if you got a cold. They might feel it in their throat. They feel your energy in their throat, and they know you got a cold, and they know how to heal it. They got a solution to it. They might, they might just come in their mind because they were mercury, so they're telepathic at the same time. They have telepathy powers where things just pop up in their mind where they, where, where they, they can just know how they know how to heal you and because and, they, they study in great detail. They st so it's just like studying. Uh, st they're not a study people. They study every parts of a person how to fix a person, how to correct a person. So that's what makes uh, Virgo interesting because they mostly like physical evidence. It's going to be something that, that's factual. So they deal with science, science, applying things. So they'd be deep into the science. They'd be good scientists, good detectors, investigators, because they got to have facts. They gotta, and so once they learn to balance out their intellect or their intelligence with intuition, they win because... Everything they don't have to research. Some things they just know. They just got to trust the intuition. You know what I'm saying? They got it all day. Then they will trust it. Cause they get tired of overthinking all the time. Where they don't have to think, think, they think. They just know. They spend all the time thinking where they could just know. You know what I'm saying? So these people are very powerful people. You know what I'm saying? Intuition, highly intuitive, highly intelligent. And these are your problem solvers. These are the ones that deal with health, the ones who will help you in every way. Like, if you need them to get something done, they will get it done quick. But also, any anything, it could be astrology, if you need a natal chart, if you need a psychic reading, they will do it quick. And they will have the answer, and it will be factual. So people got Mars in the sixth house, or Mars and Virgo. This is a very powerful placement right here. And so they will fight for people. When dealing with health issues, they fight for that, for your rights when dealing with health. So they be into the medical field, your nurses, your doctors, your surgeons and stuff like that, all that there. And social work, because they want to heal you. They want to help you. So therapy, any type of healing, these people be into. So with this right here, they understand the mind. They understand the thought. They understand what you need fixing. They can see things that other people miss. So in this house here, it's very powerful. So they got to be organized. They got to be neat. They got to be careful. They like to be neat, organized. But sometimes they can be sloppy because Mercury could, could, could say, I don't care. It, it depends on if, if they're in control of themselves. But they got they got a need to be have a routine, a ritual. So they deal with rituals. Like, without, these rituals help them stay on course. Ritual means practice. They need everyday practice. Like, drink coffee in the morning. They might drink. I'm just using this, this for example. Drink coffee in the morning. Might be part of their ritual, a daily routine. They need a daily routine. As long as they got a daily routine, as long as they organize, they feel comfortable. They feel comfortable when everything, everybody on time. When nobody ain't on time, these people can snap. It could be chaos because they like things to be on time, structured. So if you go into these people's party, be on time. If you're not on time, they can snap about that. Oh, this person ain't on time. Oh, this person that. Just look on, look at your family member chart and see if they got this placement. Mars and Virgo. I bet you you see why why they step on you period on time. You see, because 
It deals with that. They were organized. And that's where they feel most comfortable at. They feel most comfortable when everything on schedule. They need a schedule. You can't just come one day and say, let's throw a party the same day. They want to know ahead of time. They, they, they want to know ahead of time because they deal with schedule. They deal with being on time. It's earth. So they, they, got, they got to be on time. They want to be on. They need to know because they have a lot of, lot of stuff going on. So they grew up in a fast-paced environment. It's Mercury. So they grew up in a fast-paced environment, fast thinking. That in the home life, what their mother or or anybody who they live with, they they they, they always try to spy them and want them to be smart. And they they had challenges when dealing with being smart. So they had challenges dealing with being neat and being organized. Because these people most likely who they stayed with was neat. If they wasn't neat, they had a problem with them not being not being neat. You see what I'm saying? So it's either or. So, but when you got Mars and Virgo, this is one of the best healing placements you can have. One of the best, smartest people you can have. When they're a problem solving, find a solution. They love this type of stuff. And when they find a solution, they feel good. When they get a job done, they feel good. They, they like to complete a task. So you can trust these people to complete a task. You can trust people to get all the data, information you need. You come to these people when you need information. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Virgo moon. When people come to me, they get a whole book. So I'm saying so you got Mars, this is how they take action, you know. I know that's part of my emotions as a Virgo moon, but this is how a Mars and Virgo people take action. This is their life force. And sexual wise, they undercover freaks. So that's why they they're good at they they want to act professional at first, but when they when you get close to know these people or or you you gonna find out that they some freaky mother freakies out of all, all signs. Yeah, because they got many ways. They always think of it. They got many ways. They got to do some of everything. They want to be an expert in everything they do, professionalists. So just like they like to be a professional, they also can uh, honor being improfession improfessional too. So they were like people who helpless too, people who are helpless to them because they want to improve these people. They, they like to improve people's life. So that must the lowest class people because they want to help improve them because they can see they can up, help upgrade people. And so they might mess with somebody who like a nobody to you, but to them they they can see potential and they they think they can help improve this person's life. So you see people with Mars and Virgo with the lowest of the lowest, or you think they they with the lowest of the lowest people, is because they think they can help fix them or help improve them. So when you got Mars, you got Mars in a Mars and Virgo. That's why. And this is a very powerful placement. I'm going to read your comments at the end. But this is a very powerful placement right here. Mars and Virgo. You know what I'm saying? And so anybody who, like your fitness, your fitness trainers, you want to hide if you could. Because when they get into something, they know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. So you want to mess with these people. Mars and Virgo or Mars and Six House type people. Because they know what they're talking about. They want to be an expert in whatever they do. And the thing is, when, when they write something, they're gonna keep looking, they're gonna keep reading over, 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 and over and over to make sure they correct their mistakes. When they say something, they're gonna keep replaying it in their mind, make sure they ain't made a mistake. So, so cause they, cause they wanna correct themselves. Because it's Mars in the sixth house of Mars and Virgo. So that's the thing about these people. They can say things over and over and over and over, cause they want you to get it. So, so we did on Mars and Virgo. They can wear you out like like it's like an assault attack. You be like, I get you. I heard you. See what I'm saying? That's the type of people you're dealing with. And, and they might not say it to you about 10 times. So now, when you got Mars and Libra in the seventh house, I'm halfway through. We got Mars and Libra. I got six more uh, placements to go through. Mars and Libra are the seventh house. So this Mars deal with Venus and air. Okay, these people are thinking is off the chain. Because this is the house of justice. And so cutting things, discernment is what they're good at. Breaking things down. Uh, finding solutions to like Virgo problem solving. But they do it in more in a mental way. And so these people will be highly intuitive, of course. And also uh, empaths. Mental empaths because they can, they can feel your thoughts. They can feel what you think, and they know what you're thinking. They can read your mind. They deal with relating to people. So we're talking about relating to people and relationships. They're good when dealing with relationships. They know who will be for you. 
more than they know who will be for themselves. They know, they know about people. So their whole life is to know about people. So they know psychology. They deal with the mind, and they want to know how you think. And the thing is, they accept everybody' uh, uh, perspective. We got Mars and Libra or the seventh house. Everybody' perspective count, and nobody wrong until it's factual. So these people don't go for anything. They deal with discernment. They deal with like sometimes like being objective to other people. What other people say. Just like Aquarius, they can be objective or rebellious. Not really a rebellious, but objective, like, because they, they want facts. They want the truth. They deal with truth. They deal with justice. But also, this place will deal with beauty. So anything that's not in harmony, uh, anything that, that that's not in harmony, they don't mess with. They don't like. They like peace. They like harmony. So anything that don't look right, anything that's not beautiful, it could be the people's soul, it could be the way people look. It could be people's house. They don't like that. So they want to help you become beautiful. They want to help. They saw like Virgo in a way where they help. They want to help uh improve you due to love. Cause when love is there, they want to they want to see the best in everyone. And they want everybody to be right. See, once these people learn that they can't uh change people or everybody, they'd be good. They only can prove those who they can improve, help improve. And people got better, people got to love themselves, they'd be right. So people with Mars and Libra or Mars in the seventh house, it's all about loving themselves first so they can show people what real love is. Because they can show their love outward and don't even love themselves and go through it. Turmoil. And, and so they must learn how to love themselves because they can be the master of love. Because this house deal with love. This house deal with beauty. This house deal with uh, the good life. Living good, you know what I'm saying? Love to feel good. They don't like living their emotions, but they can't help it. They might appear to be cool, calm, but the inside, they got a lot of emotions running through. I'm a Libra son, and I know this by heart, you know. So they got a lot of emotions running through their head, you know what I'm saying, that they try to control and keep down because they, they, they love peace. They don't want to uh, go through nothing. They want peace, harmony, you know, they want things to flow and things like that there. And that's what they love. So when things are out of order, they don't do too well. You know what I'm saying? They, they might stab and just uh, uh, say like, if somebody did something wrong to everyone and the scales already tilted down, they don't want to fight for you because they about justice. to take the uh, the enemy out. Who are the community, whoever the enemy of the community, you understand, Libra is a cardinal. This is a cardinal house. And so these people will going to take the enemy out. They're going to start something new. Beginning, take this enemy out, stash him out, so they can have peace in the community. But it got to be the scale tilted. If they see that the person ain't really done nothing, they'll they'll let it flow. Like this little issue got to really be something. These people go all out their way for the people because they really love who they love, whoever they found it, and whoever they love. You know what I mean? It could be not only family as people, but also if they take great concepts in their mind that the, that the spiritual world is their family. They, they really would love spirit. You know what I'm saying? They really could be spiritual people, very spiritual, high vibrational. And so these people deal with business too. So they're good with negotiation. They, they're good with being a diplomat, peacemaker. So talking about speaking, they got one of the best smooth tongues. They know how to speak uh, because what makes them so good because they know how to bring the peace. The whole thing is to, is to bring the peace. They already got the air sign, I mean the air element, and so they know how to speak and communicate due to the air element. And plus, they're about peace. So they got to find ways. They, so they're super creative. So they use their creative skills to charm and to bring peace to the environment. Sometimes the only way these people lie like that is only if they're trying to bring peace in the environment. Because they, they see, if they see that this lie will help them to keep the peace, that's why, they, that's, the, that's why they're lie. Other than that, these people are not really no liars like that. So I'm going to just say that, put that out there. They could appear to be phony to some people, but they're not phony like that. That's just true. The, the true sense is happy. Sometimes they can say something and people will take it like these people are phony or they fake, but they're not. They're just happy going and they're just, they just good at saying, speaking to, storytelling. And so when people 
see how calm and easy they say they did this, they did that. People say, nah, they ain't did that. And they might look too pretty for them. But this play, let me, let me tell y'all this right here. Mars and Libra, or the seven house, they might look pretty. But these people got heart. They got heart. They will fight. And, and when they, because they look pretty, y'all might think they don't do nothing, but they they got hard. These are some of the most beautiful women, beautiful uh, uh, people, even males too. You know, they're going to dress fly. They're going to be flamboyant. They're going to be the spinners. You know what I'm saying? They're going to look good to the T. But it ain't, I'm going to say this right here too. Like Taurus, it's like a need to look fly on the outer appearance because this is Earth Venus. Air Venus, it starts in the mind first. So the thing is about uh, uh, these people, Mars and Libra, or the seventh house, uh, it, it ain't got to be physical. As long as your your kind words, the way you communicate is beautiful, your mind is beautiful. That's most important to anything. And that's what people fail to realize. They think it's more astrologers would say it's the outside appearance. I'm a Libra. I know it ain't the outside appearance. We love that. We love the, them. The outside appearance look good too, but it's more mental. I don't talk to many beautiful people. Who look the good on the outside? Nice body, nice look, all good and smell good, but their mind wasn't right. Their communication game wasn't hitting on nothing, and that turned me off. So, what had to be right is their mind. I don't mean I don't met people who wasn't all outside beauty, but their mind was it. You know, what I'm saying we connect, and, and their communication game was it. So, people with Mars and Libra mostly go by the mental aspects and the communication game. You look at the element. So that people fail to realize. I know scholars, they, they be telling y'all something, but they don't be telling y'all what it is. All you do is serve people who have these plates for you, and they will see. You see, and people who got Libra traits itself, like Libra sun, Libra moon, Libra rising, and they'll understand it's most about the soul beauty, the mind beauty, the anything, communication beauty. So Taurus is more about the physical beauty, of course. It's earth. So um, people with... With this, with this placement, they could be great judge, judges. We got Mars and Libra. They're good at being a lawyer because they're good with their words. They can speak, and they like to talk, 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 talk. They can talk, talk, talk forever. And this will stimulate them. They need mental stimulation. Mental, they need a mind to be stimulated. Uh, uh, they need a mind to be stimulated. And they need good communication. They, they can communicate on every level. Air signs can communicate on every, every level, especially with Libras and Gemini. Aquarius could too, but it's important to Aquarius like they they can be very talkative. Some Aquarius, especially the men, but women could be more like silent. They can hold a lot in, but they still want to express themselves. Aquarius still Aquarius still want to express themselves some way. You know what I'm saying? But uh very talkative. These people are very talkative. They need communication. They need mental stipulation. If they don't get it from you or people, they will get it from the TV. They will get it from the radio. They will get it from something. So people have Mars and Libra place, but they can be great social workers, healers, uh, uh, leaders when dealing with peace, when dealing with bringing the peace. So therapy work, any of that work, any healing work that deal with that. So music, arts, because uh, they're super creative. So arts and things like that, they'll be good with. So, and more. You know, it's more than that, but I, that's, that's just the short list I give you. Now, moving on. When you got Mars and Scorpio, or Mars in the eighth house. Okay, this is the house of mystery. This is the house of secrets. This is the house of sex. So it's in the house that people who keep, people who, who have sex on the low, people who have many relationships on the low, people who cannot keep secrets on the low. But also people who like to dive into the mysteries of life. People like to tap into this is what they do for fun, investigate. Do what they do for fun. They can be obsessive about other people, obsessive about things. But also this dominant energy. Very powerful people, people who are strong. People could be uh great leaders in the world. You no, know? and people who don't ride people coattails. People what I mean is people who 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 don't act like other people. Who can say, forget that person you know? and because they, they want to be themselves, you know what I'm saying? People who it's like that type of energy. So this Mars and, and Scorpio, or Mars in the eighth house, these people are very dominant people, very powerful, but they're cool, they're calm, and they're magnetic. People you want to be like, people who you want to imitate because they're strong. So another thing, these people here are very in tune with emotions. They understand your emotions. They understand your psyche. 
and it can explode. When it explodes, you're either going to see it outward or they can keep it in and take revenge on you later on down the line. If you did anything to these people, you don't want to go to war with these type people because they know how to war and in and, and the psyche, they laugh. They're good psychi psychologists. They're good with the mind. They understand how the mind works and they like to know what makes the mind ticks. This is what they study. This is what they're into. They know your vibes, know your energy. They know when to move. They know how to operate. They use the inner guide a lot. They use the intuition a lot. They use the consentient ability a lot. And so these people are very psychic, very psychically in tune. We talk Mars and Scorpio or Mars in the eighth house. So finances, they're good with that. They're good with money. They're good when dealing with finance. They're good with money. They're in tune uh, with hidden energies, with mysteries. They love stuff like that. They like puzzles. They like to solve it. They like to solve things. You know what I'm saying? So these are problem solvers. These people who, who can help you. They, so they're great healers. They got that healing effect energy, but also that p powerful mysterious energy, that powerful energy that you want to be like, or the powerful energy that you want to stay away from because it's very powerful. I mean, you, if you hate these people, you won't, you probably will stay away from them anyway because you know you know how powerful they are. You know what I'm saying? So they're very intriguing, very intriguing, very excited. I mean, they're super creative. They got many creative skills and ability to fix things, to do things, their mind, the way it works. You know what I'm saying? They break the taboos in life. These could be your outlaws right here. They break the taboos in life. But they always transforming, being a better person. Always transform, transforming, being their better self. So they eventually will reach their higher self. You know what I'm saying? Because this deals with the outer world and spread that love and spread that knowledge to everyone and spread that healing to everyone and break the taboos and bring the truth to you. These people are your truth seekers and, and bring the truth to you, the light to you. And they know your emotions. They know your pain. They know what you go through. So they make great spiritual doctors and spiritual healers and and, and investigators and detectives and, and scientists and and more. I mean, good with finance and business owners and things like that. So when you talk about Mars and and Scorpio of the eighth house, these are the people you you should take notes of. You know what I'm saying? These are the people you want on your team because they will fight for you and they know how to win the war. Because you understand, this is the house that Mars feel comfortable in. It's just like Aries, Mars feel comfortable in Scorpio because this is one of Scorpio planets. And so Mars, they know how to go to war. They know how to, like like Aries out in the open. But but Scorpio, this house here, they can they can do it on the low, secrets. So they can hold grudges. Like, like Aries don't hold grudges. They get off their chest. But Scorpio can hold grudges, and you don't want that type of grudge. So, a lot of mob bosses be with this energy. So, with this being said, Mars and Scorpio, or Mars in the eighth house, is a very powerful placement, beautiful people. So, with this being said, let me read some of the comments, which I say about this placement right here. We got Mars in the eighth house. But anyway, moving on. This is your life force, and sexity is what you master, because this is what part of your vibration. You'll be professional at sex. You know I hit all the spots when dealing with sex, when dealing with orgasm. But you also, this your life force. This is also your part of your how you take action. You take action is strong, stand strong. You take action being cool, calm, in any situation, the toughest situation. You can handle the toughest situation. This is the way you take action. This is your life force. So th this is how you operate in this area of life. You know what I mean? So, so you you the type who had a uh, uh, sexual vibrational energy right here. And this is what you like to talk about. This is the topics. You like to talk about topics that people are scared to talk about. So now you got Mars in the ninth house of Sagittarius, Mars and Jupiter. This is more uh, expansion of the mind. This is very powerful energy right here. Very powerful energy right here, cause Mars and Sagittarius, these people are adventurous. They 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 need something to do. Mars in the ninth house or Sagittarius, they need something to do. They need something to do. They need something to put their time into. Cause they deal with wisdom, so they need. Uh, uh, they don't have nothing to do. They gonna make something to do. They can be very dramatic, but these people are good at listening to people. They are good at listening to different people' thoughts, ideas, and stuff like that. You know, they listen to you don't mean that they're going to follow up what you say because they, they already got the confidence that they are it. And so these people, if they bored, 
this is like like a downfall to them. So they got to put they, they got to do multitask so they can start something. Don't never finish it. Start many tasks. Don't finish it till they find something better. They find something better. They they skip they skip that and go to the next without even finishing it. So these type of people are very expressive, very communicative, good storytellers, good comedians. You have fun with the fun life, good life. They're very loving, but you can't keep track of them because they stay on the go, they stay on the move. Just like Mars and Gemini, they stay they, they opposite. They stay on the go too. They do it on the big level. See what I'm saying? So they all around the world. They everywhere. So these people here with this energy here, they like to learn from life, experiment in life. So their wisdom, Mars, Mars will hype them up to get more wisdom, more knowledge. So they like to spit the truth because it's a sign of justice. So they bring the sword to the injustice. So so they like to bring discernment to things, break things down because they deal with the truth. They like to get to the bottom of things. And they like to speak the truth. They like living the truth. They're very spiritual, divine people. Because this is divine house. You got Mars and Sagittarius. These people are very clairvoyant. They can see the big picture. They can see things, see images, see spirits. Uh, 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 they know what's up by what they see. They can see it. Clairvoyance, pictures, images, auras. And so they can read this energy. Those who's definitely in tune with this energy, who activate this energy, they really can do this. It's part of their nature. So somewhere in life, they don't experience seeing something. And so these are your seers in life. Some will call them prophets. So they can they can like tell your future, tell what's going on, tell what's this right here. So these people are the ones be great spiritual teachers, spiritual healers. Um, also the ones who your travel guys who, who love to travel around the world, experience different cultures, experience different things. And so these people be good when dealing with counseling, giving them great advice, the sages and stuff like that. They're bringing the light to you, your light bringers. So you would like to deal with these people, you know what I mean? So, but they can be very irresponsible, very inconsistent, and people you can't really trust because they stay on the go, stay on the move, because they're free spirits. They're very free spirits, so they like entertainment. They like excitement, and if you're not excitement, entertainment, they're going about their way. They don't like nothing bored. So if you try to box them in, fence them in, they don't like that. They'll fight for that. They'll fight for other people's freedom. I mean, because they, they believe in free thinking, free movement, stuff like that. So they could be your freedom fighters, too. Also, your judges, your lawyers. So they're good when, when dealing with stuff like that. Being famous, just like your Mars and Leo, they could be famous. Your Mars and Scorpio could be famous. Your Mars and Sagittarius could be famous. And your Mars and Capricorn could be famous. But now we're still in Mars in the ninth house and Sagittarius. So... If you could be very famous, very famous for something, especially when dealing with knowledge, it, it could be into the music, the arts. So all around knowledge, wisdom is, is the forte. Wisdom, teaching, learning. So they like to learn. They learn everything. Learn from you. Learn from him. Learn from a baby. Learn from everyone. That's that's their mind. I can learn from everyone. They're so interested. So they be on that knowledge. These are the ones who step on that knowledge. These are, are, are the ones, knowledge seekers. So when dealing with this energy here, these are the ones you want to listen to. They can speak well. They know their knowledge. They know their stuff right here. You know what I mean? So once you understand that, it can be a spiritual people, very spiritual. Some are religious, but they do good when they're spiritual. And they're very spiritual, you know what I'm saying? Because this is a very spiritual house where they really carry it out, where they really teach you about spirituality, where they always talk about spirit, where they always talk about things that's spiritual and wisdom. And stuff like that. They all talk about uh, philosophy. These are your philosophers. You know, so these are the ones you want to listen to because they're going to speak wise lines, wise lyrics. You know what I'm saying? So right here, this we have a planet of luck. So they're lucky in this type of stuff. They're lucky when dealing with this type of house, this energy, when dealing with wisdom, dealing with knowledge. And when they're confident, when they're cheerful, when they're happy. So these people are happy. So there's people who you want on your team because they bold. So... These are your warriors, spiritual warriors. So it is being said in spiritual guise. Now, moving on to Mars in the 10th house of Capricorn. Okay, we're talking about Capricorn here. Cappy, this the goat. The one who, who want to master everything. Hey, master, we in the house of Mars and Capricorn. Mars uh, in the house of mastery. Mars in the house of careers. Mars in the house of people want to set a foundation. You want to build things in the world. 
want to build things everywhere in the world. We want to make things, we want to build corporations. These are your builders of the world. So we got Mars in this house. It's going to make them more build. It fit good in this house because Capricorn already about building. So they take their time to study and to learn things. And when they do learn, they be good at what they learn. They can do almost almost anything, even healing, because they could be your mediums. It's like Mars and Scorpio could be mediums, and not only Clasentian, but also uh, Mars and Capricorn people could be mediums, whether they channel energy or they could talk to spirits and stuff like that there. So these people deal with mastery. They will learn how to master something in life. They want to master one thing at a time and go to the next and keep mastering different trades and different goals. So they're very goal-oriented, ambitious, and very calm, but they are the ones who are very serious. They, they don't play. They like When they enter something, they're very into something. It's sort of like when you be a clown in class, you got that serious person say, say, shut up. I'm trying to learn something. That's much pretty much Capricorn or Earth energy right there, especially Capricorn. So because these people are trying to master something, they want skills. Skills are very important to them. That's how they get down. And these people are family oriented, they're providers. They want to provide for their family. They want to provide for everything. They're hard workers. They're all earth science hard workers. They are definitely hard workers. And that's initiate new ways and start new businesses and corporations that will span, that can feed many families and many people around the world. So these people are very goal oriented. They'll start at something like McDonald's and advance and own the McDonald's. They'll start something like as strippers and end up being the one who owned the club. Stuff like that, cause they gonna they gonna know inside and out of whatever they into. They gonna know that from from the inside and out. They gonna know everything about the club. Like they gonna know everything about uh, McDonald's. Gonna know whatever they into. They gonna know everything about it, the business, and they can break it down to you. So they be they make you great financial advisors. They are good at running groups when dealing with structure and order. They they be good. They be good at organizing anything, events, planners. Right here. So it's some people who organize who need and they need that order. And they gotta feel secure in doing anything. So they're very careful how they move. So they're very careful how they move. They move sort of like when you think of the organized mob, but in but let's say in a positive way. Organize in a positive way without hurting people. So boom. But they can get on the negative side too. They can be organized and organized, hit for money, cause they love money. Really, I ain't gonna say love money, but it's like they know it's a need for money to survive. They like to have things. So, of course, yes, yeah, some of them do love money. Some of them do because they work hard for that. They can work hard and always feel like they don't have enough money even when they got enough. Right here. So, they can be very greedy and very, and they, and they can be a victim of robbery a lot. Victim of robbery, but also be the ones who rob. So, or cheat people for money. So, look at this placement and your relatives. If they get robbed a lot or or if they like money a lot, if they're greedy and stuff like that. But they're hard working. They got about five jobs. Look at the Capricorn placement or the Mars and Capricorn. And if they got all these different jobs, look at this placement. You know what I mean, also look at Mars placement itself, or Aries placement, if they got a lot of jobs. Because these two, we're talking about Capricorn, Saturn, and Mars, hard working people. So yeah, especially look at, look at this placement. And so you're talking about a medium, a healer. They can be a healer too, like hers. Find out like what hers will heal you and stuff like that there. What's good for you. So they can be into the herbal business and gemstone business. Just like Mars and Virgo could be into the gemstone and the herbs. So is Mars and Capricorn right here. So these people are going to be the ones who look neat, who going to have expensive stuff. I mean, so they're going to dress elegance in their own way. So they already got a confidence about themselves, but they never really show you their emotions. So once you, once they learn how to use their emotions to their advantage, they win in this house. Mars in the 10th house, or Mars in um, Capricorn. Now, moving on. Their whole thing, let me finish off, finish saying about Mars and Capricorn. Once they find stability in their life, they win. Once they, once they, uh, uh, Build them a foundation. It could be a home. Have it could be a businesses, a foundation, a family foundation, some type of foundation. They feel most secure. Now, when you got Mars in Aquarius or the eleventh house. These people, Aquarius, think different. Higher mind. You got Mars in a higher mind. They already think off the chain, so that's gonna add the booster to it. 
Another thing I got to say about I got to go back to Capricorn because you got Miles Capricorn. Forgot about the sexity. The sexity is that they can be on the dark side and 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 really have real nasty sex, nasty sex, do all type of positions and all type of stuff. So I forgot to explain that part right there. And Miles and Sagittarius ninth or the ninth house, they have they have fun. Their sex is very fun. They they do many positions, many styles, and many ways they have sex. Now, Mars and Aquarius, the way they have sex, I'm going to get to it. It could be, it's going to be different, unique, and it's quite to them. It depends. But if they want to experiment, they'll do anything with you. Even these people can be homosexual, some of them, bisexual, because they deal with the mind. First, first to think of stuff in their mind. Their mind is all to them. So they think of things in their mind. So they could persuade you. Uh, so smooth that you you won't even know that that they don't persuade you. That we got Mars and Aquarius or eleventh house, like Mars and Aries, you can see it, the, the how they try to persuade you or Leo, Mars and Leo, you can see or Fire sign, you can see how they persuade you. But when you got Mars and Air sign like Aquarius or Libra or any one of them, they they come smooth. You don't know what they persuade you. They don't persuade you without you even knowing they persuade you. Now you're doing what they say on the low. So Aquarius don't appear to be the ones who rule nothing. But at the end of the day, you somebody who can see through it, they say, oh, Aquarius the one who really run this. Because they were the one who persuade you. So they were the one who made it happen behind the scenes, just like a Libra. So we got Mars in the 11th house, or Aquarius, this with the higher mind. So these people will be on stuff that is different, humanitarian thinking. Like politics, keep up what's going on in the world. Like instead of just thinking about you as their part, they're gonna think about some of everyone. You better dog, they not focus on me, they focus on everyone, everything around me, except me. You know what I'm saying? We will get my time, Aquarius. <laughs> but but once they learn how to focus on you too and the outside world, that's how they win. They have to focus on their partner too. And don't leave you out. Not only just think around you about, about your family or think about your friends, they need to think about you too. And that's how they win. Get everybody a, a good share of their love. Because they deal with universal thinking, universal thought, a higher mind, higher consciousness. You know what I mean? So their energy is all over the place. They got unexpected uh, illness, unexpected illness, unexpected sickness come out of nowhere. So because they deal with like unexpected things happen like unexpectedly. Things happen out of nowhere. Um, um, they like to surprise people. And they also like surprises. So you surprise these people, they love that. But they also like to surprise people, like those surprise parties, stuff like that. So they think out of the box. You might question these people at first, and you might hear them cut them off, but it's best to listen to them because a lot of times when you cut them off, you don't know where they're going. Then after they finish and you really think of it, especially if you're SI who can understand them, you'll be like, oh, that's awesome. How you think like that? You'd be like, wow, they, they just started that? That's powerful. But sometimes people cut them off quick and thinking they they thinking regular, but they're not thinking regular. They're thinking outside of the box, but it's still going to make sense on their level. It's still going to make sense. And it's going to be something new. You're going to be like, oh, that's a great idea. Like that there. And these people live by the intuition more than small details. They don't really like to read great. They don't like to go into the, to, to the small details because it's a universal mind. So... They, they like to, to to listen more to their intuition. They be correct most of the time. Sometimes they say they know and they don't know. They love to use that word. I don't know. You tell them about something. I already know. And they might don't even know. I, I bet I'm around the curves. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I listen to them. So Mars and Aquarius people are your great uh, scientists, scientific minds who break things down, who come with their own conclusions, and inventors to start out something new, and always inventing something new. So like Leo as trendsetters, they, they bring their own style on a big level, like a, a new pattern to build a new car, uh, a new a new something to build something. And they come with new ideas, a new this, a new that. And you be like, oh, that's awesome. You're great scientific geniuses who collect cognates, who get downloads from the universe. They clear cognizance. They I know. They they the psychic knowing is part of who they are. So people who can who, who who just have information on you and they don't know where it comes from, but they just know. 
That's them. And people who are, are like very friendly, very kind. Very friendly, very kind, but then all of a sudden they're rebellious. I guess your thoughts. I guess what you say. <laughs> That's Aquarius. You know, see, but it, so they can go hard. They can be like outlaws because they're different. You know what I'm saying? They can feel like outlaws, like they're alien, not from this world. But they is they from this world. You know what I'm saying? Someone could go crazy because they could feel like people don't understand them. But people, some people do understand them. You know what I'm saying? So, but they could feel like well, most people probably can't because they're on a different level. You know. Cause you got Mars in eleventh house, or Mars in Aquarius. You like an alien on this planet. See, that's how you how you feel when it comes to the mental state and communication. Like Pisces feel like that on a spiritual level. You feel like that on a mental level. You see what I'm saying? Capricorn feel like that on an earthly level. So so let's get some understanding here. And Sagittarius feel like that on a fiery level. So you got the four at the end. You see. So now we're talking about Aquarius. These people are very powerful people now. The way they think, the way they move, some of the kindest people you ever meet, friendliest people you ever meet, and people who you can trust. When they have your back, they really have your back. But as long as you don't pin them down because they like their freedom, you're good. You're good. Don't pin them down. Because then they, they will vanish out your life. Just like a Libra or a Gemini, especially a Libra or Aquarius, they're going to vanish out your life. Air signs will vanish out your life. Without thought, because they don't like you to pin them down, especially Aquarius. They don't like you to pin them down, period, or pressure them. So let them have their thought, their ways, and they'll be loyal to you. They'll love you. So these people here are also uh, like experience all type, type of stuff, try out things and things like that. So that's the good thing about these people. So any, if you can stimulate their mind, and you funny, and they don't like to be bored, you got them. They don't like to be bored, period. Just like all the else don't like to be bored, stimulate like the mind, and the communication, so is Aquarius. They more than ever. Don't If you can make them laugh all the time and stimulate like their mind, you're very smart, be on intellectual topics, they love that. Now, if you're on a topic that they don't agree with, you can tell because they won't be interested. They, they don't even hear you. You'd be like, did you hear me? They ain't, they ain't, they ain't heard nothing you said. So... How you get these people? Mental communication. If you ain't got no mental communication, the funniness, the funniness about you, ain't no mess with no Aquarius or air signs, period. You got to be fun, loving for air signs, period. Because they can go in every world. Like Aquarius can go, they can know about the motions, I know. They can know about the earth, I know. And they can know about the fire, I know. Because air can go in every world. Like like the water deal with the past, the earth deal with the presence, and fire deal with the future. But air signs can go in all of them. So just let you know how psychic they can be. It's accordingly. So now, they're good. They're very much clear cognitive. They're intuitive naturally. They're clear cognizance. They definitely clear cognizance. I know they, they get information from the universe. It's come to them. It's come to them. So these are geniuses, intuitive geniuses. And very creative, very creative skills. They get, yeah, so. With it being said, let's move on to Mars in the 12th house. Mars and Pisces, the final house. Now, you know, this is the house of the old soul. This is the house of very spiritual, spiritual warfare. And this is the house of people of unconditional love, the house of unconditional love, the house of habits, the house of the inner world. It go deeper than the spiritual world. This is the house that's so spiritual, so divine. They got all the psychic gifts. They went through all the houses, everything that. All the houses went through. When you get Mars in this house, they know how to take action. So, so they, they like to float with life because they done been through it all. So just like a number nine, like to float with life and fit in with everybody. The most most humanitarian is the number nine. And numerology so is the last house of Pisces. Last house of Pisces. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the last house. So they know how to adapt to all levels. Go, go from the first house all the way on through right here. So they go through so much that that they need a way. They, they escape. They escape this world. They get on drugs, alcohol, because they want to live in harmony. They want love, universal love. So once they learn how to, to confront and face their fears and don't escape it, this is how they win. But they need earth in their chart, something to keep them stable. When they got Mars here, Mars can help them be a fighter. So this is a good placement. Mars can actually help them 
overcome addiction, overcome things, but also it can help them get more into it because the is aggressive energy. So it's according to their thinking, what else they have to help them. So these people here, this is very powerful, highly psychic people. They're going to get downloads. They're going to get, uh, 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 they're going to really feel it because Mars, Mars intensify all the energy in every house that I just named or every uh, Zodiac sign that I named, Mars going to intensify that. It's going to make it more than what it is, more than a regular Pisces. Mars going to put more, because these people decide they take action. They take action with their emotions. So they're super sensitive, always defensive, always, uh, 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 always want to want to want to be to themselves because they're thinking people uh uh against them or something like that and so every word is every word somebody say people with mars and cancer cancer or mars and pisces the 12th house they always defensive or always you know so cancer be one who is who will snap but mars mars and pisces be the type who will stay away from you they, they go about their way or they get on some type of high it's the way they take away their pain or getting some type of addiction. It could be sex, whatever it is, to take away what they're going through. Trying to escape this world. So these people can live in their head all the time and, and be into a lot of trances. All of a sudden, they drive there into a trance and they got to wake themselves up real quick before they crash. It's just like Mars and Cancer could do the same thing, so is Mars and Pisces. They be into like them trances, very meditative, very dreamy, dream a lot. I mean, so these people like to be in their fantasy world. They feel good because they, they create a world of their own in that world. They create a whole movie in their head. So that's why they're good at making movies. They're good at pictures, taking pictures. They're good at dealing with artistic stuff. They're good with dealing with music because they can feel it. They can feel what they what, what they see in their mind. They can feel what they're going through. So they're very psychic in tune. These are your psychic empaths. They got all the psychic gifts, clear cognates. They got uh, clairsentient. Uh, clear audience, uh, whatever psychic gift they choose, they choose all of them. They can open up all of them if they want. Some of them naturally it happened to them naturally where they have psychic dreams. So this is the all around psychic placement right here. It's very spiritual. So the only way they trust spirit, they win. A lot of times, how how this placement lose Pisces in general could be Pisces Sun, Pisces Moon, Pisces Rising, or any Pisces pl pl any Pisces placement. The way they lose, let me slow down. And talk I'm talking too fast. How they lose when they don't trust spirit, when they don't have no faith, and they feel down. They need the spiritual realm. So when they're spiritual, they're at their best. Not religion, because religion wouldn't do nothing but like make them go through it emotionally. They would go through it off and on and, and snap it and don't know what to do and go crazy. But when they become spiritual, spiritually, uh, very spiritual, and get into spiritual practices, higher consciousness and everything, this is when they win. Because they know how to balance out themselves. They know how, how to move how to operate. This one, they at their best. They, they be the best psychics, the best in anything they do. They be the one bringing universal love more than the Libra or any other sign. But if you only, the thing is, everybody who had this placement don't master that, you see? So so don't worry about a whole bunch of people going to master that. Nope. It's going to be some who do, but when they do, you're going to find that some of the greatest people in the world, your great nurses, doctors, everything, healers, uh, 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 scrologers, pneumologists, just like, uh, Mars in the 11th house of Aquarius or Aquarius is great. Um, astrologers and deal with pneumology and all that there and, and higher mind. Pisces is good when deal with the spiritual realm. They're good at astrology, pneumology, the same as Mars and Aquarius. So Pisces would think different spiritually. They, they would be, uh, people want to imitate them and be like them because they'd be uh, a, a, a mystic to people, very mystical to people. Eyes, they, cause they gonna look magical. One minute they they look like this, they look like that. They re, always recreate themselves. It's like Pluto, Mars, and, and the eighth house or Scorpio recreate themselves. So is Pisces. Pisces create themselves to be whatever they want to be. Uh, look magical. Anything they dressing, they is artistic mind, beauty. These are the most beautiful people in the world. Like mars and the venus placement mars and the sun and mars and, and neptune are some of the beautiful looking people you ever see and these people like beauty mars and the sun house the fifth house venus in the second and the seventh house and neptune in the 12th house are the most beautiful people you ever seen also with the jupiter placement too in the ninth house can lead that out so the the young light people would be like your aries 
who act young and childish like, and your fire sign like Leo, they can act like a kid or childish, you know, Mars and, and them houses and like the fire houses, like that there. So when you got Mars and Pisces, these people are some of the best to be around because they great storytellers. Um, the, people love their energy itself, you know what I'm saying? There's people you want to kick it with, you feel good with. When they're at the best, you definitely want to be around because they can heal you out of every problem, great problem solvers. Let me see what the comments say. They say, I have that. I have my son and Mars in the same house and my natural chart. Okay, that's powerful. I'm in the right place right now. See the spot on. Peace, love, light, healing. Hey, King Lit. Hey, Bronze Beauty. Bronze Beauty. I have Mars in the first house. Okay, that's very powerful. Right there. You be the hero. Claire Cognitive natural. We got have quick thinking. And and you love animals. See, fire sign love animals more than anything because they can connect. The fire is spiritual and creative uh, placement. It is that they take action outwardly. Like fire is more outwardly and water is inwardly. Earth is more outwardly and air is more inwardly. So, because air deal with the mind. The mind is inward. Emotions is inward. Fire, spiritual... Uh, it's inward, but also outwardly. But you see, earth is outwardly. So that's why I deal like that. So she says, I have Mars in the first house at 10 degrees. She said, facts, bronze beauty. I'm getting to know you so good, bronze beauty. I have Mars and Aquarius. Okay, how your mind? Your mind is on fire. Always thinking. Aquarius, Mars and Aquarius, 11 house. Your mind is always on fire. Always thinking. Always. Okay. Okay. This is what's up. I'm about to get up off here. Uh, Y'all share this live. Do your thing. What she says, see, Tamika Bell says, Mars and Pisces. Why you say you my cousin, Tamika Bell? That's what I wonder. I thought you said you were my family one time. I, I'm trying to figure out who, you, who are you. I know some Tamikas. It's cousins, but I don't know, know, the, know the last name. Uh, Tamika Small, but I don't know about Tamika Bell. Spiritual versus religion. Can you elaborate more? Okay. Spirituality is more uh, connecting with the divine, one-on-one -on -one with the divine. Religious is going through another person connected with the divine, like a preacher or something. So that's simple as that. Like spirituality, like you meditate, you can connect easily with the divine. Everything is spiritual. So I'm saying religion is something that man made. It's many religions in the world, over maybe 200 to 1,000 religions in the world. Like many different sectors of Christianity, many di di different sections of of being a Muslim, like that there. So hopefully I can explain that good to you. So religion is basically man made. Spirituality is what you are. See what I'm saying? Spiritual is what you are. That's why spirituality is important. What you're made of. And everything is spiritual. Everything is connected. Let's see. Okay, makes sense. We from the same stuff. Okay, makes sense. May you share an inspiration message for us before you leave? Okay, inspiration. Meditate more, which means quiet your mind. Quiet your mind and pay attention to how the energy flow in your body. Pay attention to, to the rhythm of your heart. Still your mind. And then focus on that area inside your body. Anybody that, any part that you have pain in your body, focus on that. Meditate on it. And when you meditate on it, imagine, use your imagination. Imagine that it's healed. Imagine that. It's here. For, stay like that for a minute. Imagine. Put a picture in your mind that, that a hand touching your, that part of the body and that it's healing it. And when you do that for a minute and you feel that it, and, and you truly believe or know that it's actually happening and you, you feel some type of light, you, you really feel that it's healing. You really see that it's really, it really works. The mind is powerful. So this is what I had to say. Meditate. Quiet your mind sometimes. 
Shut out the TVs. Get in the corner. Meditate. And cool out. You know what I'm saying? Relax the mind. And try not to think of nothing sometimes. Sit back and just, just float. And, and your heart just love life. Put it in your heart. I love life. And just close your eyes and just, just smile to yourself and just let your thoughts flow freely without stopping it from thinking and, and don't think. Try not to think. Let, let it think itself. Thank you, too. She says, I have Mars and Capricorn in the eighth house. Okay, very goal oriented. I'm in ninth house. Okay, and then you about that wisdom. So it's the ninth house. You're adventurous type person. I already went through that. You can uh, go through the video after I get off off, off here. It's very powerful. Very powerful placement. So share this video. It's appreciated. Okay, with this being said, I love y'all beautiful people. So thank you, Cousin Corey. Who is you, Tamika, though? Explain to me before I leave. Who are you, Tamika? I'm trying to say, which one? I'm saying, which one, though? Is you the Smalls or I don't know about Bell or... Tamika, is you the smalls? We from the same star planet. I'll ask you, Tamika. Cause if I know, then then, then I, I could say yes. Cause I don't really know. I know, I know if you Tamika small, I think you get to the small family, then I could say yes. Or series. What is series? We from the same star planet. Tamika, what I want you to do, if you true to my cousin and you really respect my flow, I want you to hit me up. Uh, email me. R-A-P-O-W-E-R-19. Gmail. Uh, uh, at gmail.com. Hit me up and, and let me know what's up and so I can know what's going on. Because you keep telling me you're my cousin. You say we're related by series, but still, if you want to talk to me, that's do, just do that. Even if you're not my cousin, just let me know what's going on. Because you know my name. <laughs> you know my name, so my government name, so I just want to know. I understand why the cosmo, but let me let me know. If you really, you know, respect me and give me a little honor, like an honor year. Is okay, let me tell you what it is. Let me see if I can write it. I don't know if I can write it. How miss no miss how can I write? I'm trying to figure out how to write this thing. How to write. How can I write? I don't know how to write. But but uh I put my email. I come what I do after after the video, I, I um come on YouTube and put my email in a comment. And it's only gonna stay for like ten minutes, then I'm gonna delete it. Okay, I'm I'm out of here, y'all. Love y'all.